Um, what uh, what degree are you going after? Uh, political science. Of course you are. Uh, <laughs> uh, so what went wrong in your life? Uh, not a lot. Kind of just uh, getting a degree so my parents don't get that pissed at me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Word he's already chant- chanting. <laughs> It's uh, it's pretty stereotypical. Uh, so uh, so why out of all of the de- degrees to get your parents off your back, poli sci? My dad's in politics. Of course he is. Um, what uh, in I'm I'm not trying to dox you, and you can tell me fuck off at any given time. But uh, given that I heavily utilize the Socratic methodology for interacting with uh, other people. I'm an open book. You can feel free at any time to ask me whatever you need to or want to ask me in return. Um, but um, in what capacity is he sort of a politician? Is he local, state, federal? Um, he's federal. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so dad is pressuring you to follow in the family business of sorts. Um, yeah. Cool. That's that's always that always bodes well. Um, that always either goes to one of two directions. You will be infinitely bored and don't want to be there, or you become a nightmare for the rest of us. Um, yeah. So I I'm hoping you just end up bored and don't want to be there and end up like I don't know whittling flutes in Montana or something. Um, <laughs> yeah. Be- that's uh. It's funny that you say that because I I'm already bored and my passion really is music. So hey, it kind of sucks. Yes. Uh, okay. So all right. All right. All right. Um, that's that 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 makes me feel better just as you know one of the taxpayers right <laughs> yeah yeah it's like all right in the words of george carlin uh you show me a lazy cocksucker sitting on the couch all day playing with himself and i'll show you somebody not causing any problems <laughs> so like yeah i will i will 100 percent take that as a win for me um so what would you like to know where would you like to start um okay so um i uh i go to just for reference uh i go to an ivy league um but uh my assignment is the basic start of it says that you know in the summer of 2020 um donald trump effectively declared war on anarchists Mm -hmm. and in the following text box um i have to write three pages describing what anarchism and i don't even know how to say it um anarchism is or um like and like examples of if it's worked in society if it's been attempted and stuff like that so i really just kind of want to know like the basics and like the history or just like <laughs> okay, any so time that it's worked st- in history are you still watching me on stream uh no i would get um like an echo okay can you temporarily put stream on just so you can you don't yeah, just, yeah. just mute stream that's just leave oh, okay yeah open stream but mute it that way i can oh show you things okay. Mm-hmm. um okay so this is a book by peter marshall who's a noted historian called demanding the impossible a history of anarchism you'll notice its thickness it's over 800 pages mm-hmm. okay so has it been attempted this is on, this is mostly eurocentric there is some notable mm-hmm. uh area outside of europe but this is a no, notably uh eurocentric book it doesn't uh comprehensively cover south america nor does it cover africa nor does it cover asia mm-hmm. okay so again you notice the ironic title demanding the impossible and then it's 800 pages yeah all right so has anarchism been tried yes has it uh been successful well i don't know how we're defining successful but in my personal opinion, right, mm-hmm. all nations, all nation states rise and fall, all empires rise and fall, all civilizations rise and fall, right? All societies have their beginning point and end point as far as like some sort of recognizable, definable category or quantifiable group, right? We just sort of accept that within the social sciences. So in that regard, the anarchist Repu- anarchistic Republic of Kospaya lasted for 375 years and became an economic threat to both the papal states and various uh, principalities within Italy at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so 
There's one example. Um, you could look at North America for Trumbleplex. Trumbleplex is an anarchistic commune that exists uh, just outside of Detroit, Michigan. It's whether the collapse of a capitalistically driven um, globalist expansion out from that um, from that city as it decayed. Trumbleplex survived. They have their own library, their own residences. They have their own um, performing arts. They have their own gardens, that sort of thing. Um, so they were f- functionally uh, able to uh, insulate themselves from the decay of what we'll call sort of a late stage capitalist uh, manipulation of the economic uh, <clears throat> underpinnings mm-hmm. of Detroit. Um, so is it a housing complex? Yes. Like is it a, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and so, and then, you know, they, you, you, let's do a thing, right? Let's convert that to a library. Let's convert that to an artist space. Let's convert that to a performing art space. That's sort of thing, right? Uh-huh. It, yeah. Plus it's fucking the outskirts of Detroit. They're not, they're not short on, um, any sort of, <clears throat> uh, land or buildings. <laughs> yeah. Um, easy to do. Um, there are examples all through and so like here's those are some um specific examples of like oh hey here's a a a quantifiable qualifiable group of individuals that are a disparate group that are operating you could go to like christiana uh freetown christiana as well for an example of like a a a microcosmic societal group right but Mm -hmm. then what you need to and depending so anarchism is not understood by many poli sci professors it just isn't. Mm-hmm. It's not a thing that's taught or researched. There's very specific historians and pol- uh, political scientists, uh, professors that are very good at this. Austin, um, University of Austin, Texas has a very good historian that covers these sorts of topics. So depending on what you write in that box or how you approach this, you may get varying reactions from professors. I cannot promise that. Um, so <clears throat> I'm categorized as what, uh, what uh, I am, what would be categorized as a post left post anarchist. So a lot of fucking mm-hmm. things, but basically post left non. Okay. I can't account for anything that dumbasses on Twitter do credentials. First and foremost, mm-hmm. I go way back. I was bo- basically born an anarchist. I grew up in Vermont alongside cooperatives. Um, my mom had me listening to Woody Guthrie at fucking age zero, basically. Um, so anti-fascist, you know, folk music, that sort of thing. Um, I was involved in the punk and rave scene. Uh, always I was fucking involved. I grew up with it. And so I had sort of the cybernetic, uh, distributed, uh, topologies that was taught to me through that methodology. I was in occupy organizer i've been an activist and an organizer basically for 20 fucking years now at this point in my life right Mm -hmm. um so i'm not exactly um lacking knowledge in these spaces so post-leftism uh i again i say that only because i can't account for fucking twitter anarchists right twitter anything fuck all those idiots um So post-left is just basically, as an anarchist, I have some critique of the leftist side of the movement for the leftist side of the the axis, right? It's like, hey, I'm not leaving the left. I'm just saying, hey, guys, I have some, I have some notes. I have some notes, right? As an anarchist, Mm -hmm. got some notes. We are generally speaking, um, we are anti-hierarchical. We are heterarchical. So, you know, nobody teaches you there's an opposite of hierarchy, but it's heterarchy. And so horizontally organized. We are anti-authoritarian. Um, we tend, tr- we trend towards um, now modes of analyses that allow us to more readily and more easily um, recognize those that are marginalized within society. That's why historically, if you look at any movements, <clears throat> be they labor, civil rights, indigenous rights, water rights, women's rights, gay rights, these sorts of things, you will very quickly find anarchists in the fray. Um, mm-hmm. Historically, we tend to be on the right side of history. Um, that's just how that works. Um, and it's it's a byproduct of <clears throat> um, power power dynamic analysis that in- anarchists just engage in. It's, it's just a part of who we are. Um, and so we we are generally speaking, we're anti-state. We do see the state as a fundamental uh, acquiescence of what it means to be uh, engaged in consent-based um, organizational methods. Um, we see the state as a uh, mode of uh, enforcement of the dominant socioeconomic, ethnic group, religious groups will through violence. It's through the promise or threat of violence. 
Um, mm -hmm. And anybody who understands the police in any way, way, shape or form understands that. It's like, hey, don't pay your taxes. What happens? Well, they're going to confiscate your shit. Well, what if you don't give up your shit? Well, <clears throat> yeah, we know what happens. All, mm -hmm. all, all of this is ruled through the barrel of a gun. Mao was not wrong in that regard. He was a dickhead in basically every other regard, but he was not wrong. It's That's how that shit gets enforced. Um, and so ultimately, anarchists are wide and varied. We have, generally speaking, two different groups that you could very quickly uh, analyze and you could, you could point to. You have the individualists and then you have the socialists. And we don't, mm -hmm. I'm not using socialist in that regard as socialism. Um, it's the, the person versus the group. Um, and so you have people like, you know, Godwin that would just be like foundational to us, but also is, you know, an individualist. You have the hyper end of that, like Sterner, who is just egoist, but he is amongst our milieu. He's sort of extended, but he's touching anarchism to a certain degree. Um, <clears throat> so in the modern context, so anarchism goes through many phases. There's many people, there's, you know, this Proudhonian fucking, you know, property is theft, that sort of territory. We go back hundreds of years. Um, but in the modern context, anarchism is uh, functionally an integration of the individual and the, uh, the social group and a recognition that it is the uplifting of the social group through the recognition and empowerment of the individual. So mm -hmm. anarchism has melded all of that sort of thing. Um, I, I'm a big fan of saying things like, you know, you if you want communism, that's fine and all, but you can't get communism through communism. You have to get it through anarchism because communism can't manifest itself. Um, it's just so you're saying that like the people have to be like behind it, and they want to be like like when you say like you can't like you can't manifest communism. So that means that everyone has to want communism and. Yep. make that their goal to yes. overthrow. Yeah. yeah, you can't you can't have the learned men of the, you know, uh, uh, the learned men of academia enforce it upon the, uh, you know, you can't have a vanguardistic method of engagement because mm -hmm. we want a classless society. How are you going to do that? Well, we're going to set up a class and they're, I'm sorry, what? Like that's, I didn't, oh. you, you know, that's, that's literally like right out of the gate. That is anarchism. That's Bakunin, uh, Bakunin critiquing Marx at the first international territory. Um, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's like, Hey, we want to, we want a stateless classless society. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to set up a state with series of classes in it. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to heal this gunshot wound in my foot by shooting it. It seems it seems counterintuitive to me. Um, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Don't know how that's going to work out for. Oh wait, hold on. We have a historical record for how that's going to work out for them. Hold on here. Let's just check in on that. How'd that turn out? Oh, oh, tens and possibly hundreds of millions dead. Good job, guys. Couldn't have seen that coming. Um, and don't. So, like anarchists, we are we're sort of removed from this fight to a huge extent. Um, we have criticisms of everybody. Um, we communists have killed more of my, my brethren than capitalists directly. At least capitalists have this sort of hands off way of killing people right through mm -hmm. d d the dissolution of social services and the no neglect and marginalization. Capitalism does its sort of shit hands off. Whereas the communists, they're willing to get in there and do some stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, so like, so you're saying that capitalism takes time to destroy yeah your or like your point of ideology yeah or or anybody's really uh anything that is antithetical to their positionality are okay. an anarchistic critique of both of them is they both have the same problem it's it's authoritarianism that's the problem is they're both inflicting their will upon a people that do not necessarily consent to it they both have oligarchs. They both have a ruling class. They both use the statist infrastructure to enforce the will through a, vi a promise of violence enacted upon the populace. Right? Like, this is the same thing for yeah. us. It, so you have a different economic system. Woo! Yay! You still killing people? Cool. All right. Good talk, guys. Right? Like, that's, yeah. that's our problem. Our problem is uh -huh. that you're still making a promise of violence rather than engaging in, it, uh, in enacting policy through consent of the people. And that is the anarchistic critique, is it all stems from 
Foucauldian power dynamic analysis, though this exists outside of Foucault. This exists outside of, you could hear the sigh on Foucault's name. Look, he's problematic. It is what it is. Um, Fucking name me a philosopher or a fucking uh, poli-sci person or a fucking, you know, someone who's driven ideology that's not problematic. Um, Mm -hmm. So, but through that sort of power dynamic analysis, you sort of look at it and you go, okay, so who's getting fucked here? Right. That's that's the job of an anarchist to a certain extent is just sit back and go, OK, who's getting fucked? Now, let's educate on that matter. Right. Fifty percent of what mm-hmm. we do is education. Forty nine percent of what we do is direct action. One percent. I always tell people just go fucking vote, man. And <laughs> like, I, you know, just go fucking vote It is what it is. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, but 50 percent of what we do is education straight up. That's mm-hmm. it, we have what I've, I've deemed the, the three tent poles. Um, and so you have this poverty of philosophy that is, you may or may not be familiar with this if you've read, to, if you've read any Marx. Um, this is sort of a, this is a back and forth that Marx had, um, but I, I've stolen the words and used them differently. Um, okay. but we have, uh, we have what I refer to as a poverty of philosophy. It's a very intentional poverty of philosophy, right? You don't know... Mm-hmm. You can't fix how you're getting fucked if you don't understand how you're getting fucked. Mm-hmm. Right. That's that's pretty simple. Right. The, the, the yeah. So that starts very early on. It starts before you're born. It starts with your parents, your parents, parents, your parents, 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 parents. parents. Yes. There's three tent poles in chat. Um, and so like that starts very, very early on and you grow up in it. You grow up in a statist apparatus. You grow up. Nobody, nobody even learns that you're like. Did anybody ever teach you the word heterarchy, right? But you were imbued, society used hierarchy all the time, right? It's just everything's yeah. hierarchical. Everything, that a hierarchy, hierarchical, it's just everywhere. It's just ubiquitous in our society. How many people ever used the term heterarchy? There's an opposite. Yeah, around me, not, not a lot. Not There's a an lot. oppositional mode of organization to hierarchy. But our society literally just disappeared it. It's just gone. And so, like, there's this very real program of misinformation, disinformation, lack of education that is engaged in that is intentional. It's very intentional. There's just, of course, you don't, you don't give the fucking masses the tools, the information they need to rise up and fucking just get rid of all oligarchical douchebags. No, that's, that's, that's bad for business, baby. We don't do that. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. And so like, I make that point regularly. It has always been oligarchical. uh, It's always been an oligarchy. Mm -hmm. Name me a society outside of like strict, like indigenous and tribalistic cultures, limited application, right? Give me the one to 5% on the side. Name me a society that has not had a problem with the rich and powerful controlling their society. Uh, I, I, I don't think can. Yes. Cause there's always, there's always, you know, there's always someone who has more and more and more and more and more. And so the power dynamics become unbalanced. They're going to be able mm-hmm. to tip the scales. So the problem is, was, and will always be oligarchs, right? It's always going to be the, mm-hmm. the power, the, the power dynamics that are in, that are the problem. And mm-hmm. th- this is where anarchistic analysis steps in and we're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's simple as that. And so we engage in modes of analysis that allow us to like, sort of just survey the field really quickly and be like, oh yeah, that group's fucking that group. Simple as that. Mm-hmm. Like, that one's, that one's taking advantage of that one. That one's exploiting that one, right? That's, it's very simple. Mm -hmm. It's not complicated to do once you take the fucking blinders off. And so you have this poverty of philosophy that is engaged in that you ultimately um, have to overcome, right? And Mm -hmm. that takes time. That takes energy. That takes uh, edge runner knowledge, that takes uh, the ability to step outside yourself, step outside your ego, t- step outside society, right? That's that's a very specific ability and thing, and it's going to take years, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's not a thing. You don't you don't reeducate yourself or fill in mm-hmm. these missing gaps, right? In a weekend, mm-hmm. 
contrary to what like right wing morons want to believe with their Google search, this takes a concerted concerted effort over years. And so you have to like really fucking hammer it down and really approach it correctly. And so how many people have that opportunity, right? This is the, mm-hmm. this is the second tentpole of how, uh, how the U.S. specifically, but elsewhere, maintains an oppressive society. It's, mm-hmm. the, it's the financial hamster wheel. And we saw that. Yeah. We saw for a brief moment during COVID, right? People were off the financial hamster wheel for a minute. And all of a sudden, you saw the rhetoric online change real quick. People were starting to talk like, hold on, we're getting fucked. I want to stay home and make bread. (laughs) This is great, right? Mm -hmm. You have to get off that financial hamster wheel, which our society most assuredly does not make easy, do they? That's, you know, that's increasingly more difficult. And, Mm -hmm. And like to hammer the third point, the third point is simply the police state. Right. Like if I wave, as I put it in the, the essay, um, if I wave a magic wand for you and make the, the previous two uh, things go away. Right. If I just I, mm-hmm. I make you know what you need to know and I give you the breathing room right to protest, to go down there and like not have to worry that you're going to lose your like house. You, you don't have to pay rent. You don't have to worry about your medical bills. You're going to be able to like, yeah, actually, like, let's organize. Let's do some shit. Right. You go out mm-hmm. and you do it. Who's the first person that's going to show up? It's going to be the cops. If you show yeah. up in any appreciable numbers in any threatening way to the social order, the police, mm-hmm. who the Supreme Court has recognized in two separate cases, do not have a duty to protect and serve the public, right? They are there to maintain the state and to protect capital. That is just how that works. <laughs> Welcome to it. Um, you, my stepfather was a judge. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, so I, I feel you with this sort of familial, I get it. Um, yeah. So if you magically dealt the other two away, the system will protect itself. Right. And we've seen Mm -hmm. that. I've seen that intimately as an Occupy organizer. I saw that during BLM and George Floyd, right? We had people on the ground. I was on the air and we had people on the fucking ground when, um, uh, there was, uh, we had a guy literally, he was burning a fucking car, right? <laughs> like he was, yeah. he was there. All right. So like, it, yeah, cat, cat right in chat right there. I was there motherfucker. Um, yeah, we, like it, we've seen it up close and personal. Um, mm-hmm. and so, Ultimately, that's where we sort of as anarchists come in, both through direct action, and you can see some things like that through Black Block. Black Block is a tactic, not a group. It's a method of maintaining operational security. Most people don't understand this. They, they sort of, the media and politicians and this sort of stuff, this sort of, sort of goes back to the Wilson administration. This is turn of the century, a little after the Wilson administration, um, and the anti-communist, anti-socialist, and anti-anarchist pamphlets. Basically, the 1880s to the 1920s for anarchists, communists, and socialists in America, they were getting a lot of ground, but they were also doing a lot of labor action. A lot of the stuff that you take for granted, the week, weekend, uh, the two day weekend, the 40 hour work week, all these sorts of things were fought, fought for and paid for in the blood of anarchists, communists and socialists. Um, mm-hmm. Mines were bombed, factories were burned, fucking there was a lot of shit that went down um, in the span yeah. of about 40 years. Um, and we were often involved in helming and organizing like that's just what we do. And so Black Bloc is an operational security methodology. It's not a group. It's not, it's a tactic. It's a tactic. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it's like, so yeah, that's, you will see that sort of thing, but that's only one aspect of anarchist direct action. That's the thing that the media sees. That's the thing they want you to see because it's the, the more direct of direct action. Right. Mm -hmm. But Right now, in 100 plus countries, anarchists are feeding people with no organizational oversight or hierarchy that dictates that. Food Not Bombs mm-hmm. is an anarchist organization that is literally feeding people in 100 countries, in most, uh, in every state, in almost all of the major cities, in small townships, all across this country, all across this globe. Anarchists are feeding people regularly. 
That's what mm-hmm. we do. We, we feed people. Uh, generally speaking, at a protest, if you want to find the anarchist, you look for who's, who's handling food and who's, who's covering street medic work. That will f- route you into the anarchist organizations very quickly. We're street medics mm-hmm. and we feed people when we're not doing other things. Um, mm-hmm. And so that's sort of the tone and tenor of what it means to be an anarchist is like we're out there going like, hey, you guys are getting fucked. And there's other ways to organize yourselves. There's other ways to do things. There's other ways to think about things. There's other ways to like approach society with equality and equity. And you can use consensus decision-making processes and you can engage with society in a more, uh, in a more charitable manner. And these things are achievable. We've been achieving them. We've done them in our own societies, in our own communes, in our own mini states, in our own organizations for hundreds of fucking years at this point. And Mm -hmm. So when people look for like, well, where's the anarchist state? That's a misunderstanding of what it means to be an anarchist. Anarchism is working and happening every day all around you, all around the globe. It's just people don't, people can't see it because they don't know what to look for because they've been so poorly educated, miseducated and lied to that they would look at a group like Food Not Bombs and it's like, oh, they run a soup kitchen. Yes, but they do it anarchistically. You understand that this is a global organization that has no leadership. What do you Mm -hmm. think that is? That's anarchism. They literally enacted how anarchism works and they're feeding people on a global scale doing it. If that isn't a success, I don't know what is. Like, how many people are you feeding? Right? Like, that's, it's that sort of thing. And so, yeah, that's sort of the broad strokes of what I can give you for anarchism. Do you have any questions? Um, well, I got a lot of this paper written down. Uh, I guess there's a question really quickly. Um, I have to cite my sources, obviously. Would you be okay with me using a stream? I feel like that would be a pretty, you're fine. pretty cool yeah. citation to have. Yeah, you're fine for that. All, um, all of my stuff is Creative Commons as well. So if mm-hmm. you want to literally download this VOD, and trim it up and include this conversation you can um i appreciate that that is just um yeah chances are this will go up onto the youtube we are the only thing i upload youtube does not like me the only thing i we've had disagreements um the only thing i upload is conversations and so chances are this will be included um because the conversations are often just educational pieces um so Mm -hmm. Uh, if you want, you can check that or we can send it to you or make sure you have it. So it'll be a, an isolated clip. So if you don't want to yeah. do it yourself, you can just reference that as well. But you can reference this as the primary um, and then you can reference that as like, hey, you can go view it at any time sort of thing. Yeah. So um, I, I don't think I think I'm right here. But in 2011, um, Libya, the, the overthrowing of that government, or you've, I'm sure you're familiar with that. Vaguely, um, yes. Um, would like that whole situation led to like um like Benghazi and all that kind of stuff. Would those would that group of people like overthrowing their government, which no, I I think was a dictatorship. Um, no, is that's not considered the same thing. Anti-statism is not okay. the same as anarchism. Okay, we don't like the state, but you got to do yeah. other shit. Hey, uh, let me just put it this way. Military guys shoot people, but just because you go out and shoot somebody doesn't make you mean you're in the military. Exactly. Okay. Yes. You can topple a state. You can topple a dictator. That doesn't mean you're an anarchist. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Because that's, that's what my uh, professor used as like an example, and I questioned him because I thought that was just the military overthrowing their own government because they just don't they uh, just don't agree with what's going on um there was anarchism in libya um mm-hmm. there are elements of anarchism within the sort of uh libyan revolution uh, the soviets toppled the state and replaced it with their own yeah um so there is an argument to uh <laughs> without governance does not mean without government. Oh, uh, without government does not mean without governance. Um, there is. So 
so the formal toppling was not an anarchistic action. Um, that wasn't a um, an anarchistic militant group um, that participated in that. Um, but the cleanup absolutely was. Um, so when, once society sort of like collapsed under the post Gaddafi regime, um, the rebel controlled cities then um, very quickly sort of had to engage in um, decentralized distributed uh, social services. So you see groups like youth groups picking up, um, like formalizing cleanup crews to uh, work around their city, taking on roles of like uh, traffic engagement, that's uh, like soliciting blood donations, food mm -hmm. banks, clothes, and also weapons and ammunition. <clears throat> and so a lot of that was done anarchistically. Um, as far as organizational methodology goes without necessarily top down engagement, right? You and I, like mm -hmm. our government, our government just fell the fuck apart. Right. And you, you're like, mm -hmm. oh shit, like we need probably some food and water around here. Right. Like let's, let's, get, <laughs> yeah. let's get on this. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, you we're doing it and people are like, oh shit, can we help? Yeah. Yeah. By all means, like join it. Right. Like you don't need a manager to get that mm -hmm. done. You can actually organically do it. And in times of crisis, um, what you'll find is that humanity often resorts to anarchistic modes of operation by default. It's one of the ways that we, it, it just works. It works and it seems to be natural to us. This is a part of my post-anarchism. Post-anarchism has a few tenets and stipulations to it. And one of them is that functionally uh, humans are just anarchistic. Um, mm -hmm. and so the fact that your, your, your professor used the toppling of Gaddafi as an example of anarchism is a little troubling to me. Um, it, it, yeah. it's a little troubling to me. Um, they, the, the rebels were, were fighting to establish a parliamentarian democracy. Mm -hmm. So like. That's not anarchism, <laughs> right? Like you can't, mm -hmm. you can't truly call them anarchists. Um, they, okay. So here's a statement that you could use against your professor if you want, or okay. they were fighting for anarchy, not with anarchy. Mm. Okay. So. Okay. I'm sorry. Flip that. Sorry. Flip that. Okay. Okay. Um, they were they were fighting with anarchy, not for anarchy. All right. Not for. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They they were using the methodology because remember what I said about anarchism. It's here's here's what you really need to grasp, and this is this is the big thing I try to convey to everybody. Anarchism is a okay. tool, is a tool belt full of tools. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's it's a thing that has a lot of other things in it. And you can find those tools in other ideologies, in other political mo uh, modes of operation sometimes. There's overlap and there's crossover because we're like, that's a solid idea. We'll take it, right? Like the, mm -hmm. it's a tool belt full of tools. Some of those tools are like microscopes and magnifying glasses. It lets us look at things and look at them in a different way, right? It gives mm -hmm. us a mode of analysis. Some of those mm -hmm. tools are ways to fix things. Mm -hmm. food banks blood drives free libraries these sorts of things right soup kitchens mm -hmm. it gives tools to build and fix right and some of those tools are tools for fighting they're ways mm -hmm. to organize yourself um makna uh makna within uh, the ukrainian black army literally an anarchistically organized army it's mm -hmm. difficult for people to grab, wrap their head around that, but it's possible to do. It's been done. Simple as that, right? Like mm -hmm. you can organize an entire fighting force anarchistically. So they mm -hmm. were using our tools, but not pursuing our end goals. Mm -hmm. And so in some ways, you can say that they were anarchists because operating as definitely counts. But what they were pursuing or seeking does not fit the, 
an methods of analysis, the conclusive, the conclusions that one arrives at when using mm-hmm. anarchist modes of analysis. Okay. So they saw some of our tools and they're like, Hey, that's useful. We'll use that. Mm-hmm. Right. We can, we can, yeah. we can tear some stuff down. We can keep some stuff running using those tools, but we're mm-hmm. going to hand those tools back when it comes time. We want to set up this whole other thing. Right. Yeah. So they were fighting with anarchy not for anarchy. Perfect. So, yeah, the, it's sort of a distinction that needs to be made, and yeah, it's, mm-hmm. that's that's an important distinction for an anarchist, at least. Yeah. Outside the milieu, that's you know that's probably a distinction without a difference for some of these motherfuckers. But for us, it's, <laughs> yeah, it is a distinction that need be made. Um, yeah. God. Well, thank you. I, I really do appreciate it. Uh, you're welcome. And uh, here, there's one other thing I will lead you with. Um, I just want to say I I was in the I was in the, uh, your chat and someone asked me if I was barren. I I get it. It's a funny joke, but uh, my dad was a Democrat, so I I don't think that makes it any better. But it's uh definitely not barren. Definitely not barren. There we go. As always, I'll put this on the screen for you. <clears throat> don't forget, you could be rage against the machine. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to do politics. Um, okay, so here's an important thing. So mm-hmm. anarchists want to be on this side of the chart, not mm-hmm. the other side of the chart. So over here on centralized, you've got your authoritarian, you got your dictatorship, right? Mm-hmm. You've got guy in the middle dictates everything over here you've got your sort of parliamentary parliamentarian uh, and congressional model right you got your branches that do other things that lead out to the people this is the anarchistic module uh, model mm-hmm. right this is the most resilient this is the most time uh, this is the most tested by time this is the one that weathers the most storms and if you want to look at things for like you know reinforcement of this uh, these ideals um, you can look at like studies into worker cooperatives that um, bring uh, that you operate operate via hierarchical means of organization. They have higher rates of happiness, both internal and external. So, meaning the employees and the customers, both on product delivery and engagement within it. They weather economic downturns better. They have higher rate uh, higher rates of economic success within uh, for the employees. Um, so overall, they are a more resilient model. And this is recognized and sort of uh, iterated within uh, cybernetic theory as well as various other uh, mathematical models. When you engage in a distributed network, there's more overhead on the individual nodes. So you're going to have to know more and be able to do more. Anarchists have to know more and be able to do more. It's a part of the fucking requirement. There's a higher bar- mm-hmm. higher barrier to entry. But once you have, once you accomplish that higher barrier to entry, then, uh, then ultimately what you have, <clears throat> what you have is a no, uh, you have a network comprised of resilient nodes. So it doesn't matter mm-hmm. how many of these you take out, ultimately the network, uh, the network remains. And this is, this is recognized both within resiliency of, uh, anarchist communities, but also in weird ways that are maybe not worth bragging about, but are definitely worth recognizing and things like FBI and police crime analysis and how there's actual studies and there's papers published by literal police and federal organizations that talk about the, um, difficulty of infiltrating anarchistic groups because of the barrier to entry, the knowledge requirement, the participation requirements, all these things make it difficult for that sort of integration to occur. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, a Nazi group, you just need to fucking Heil Hitler yourself in and you're in. And anarchists are like, hey, what do you know? Right? Like that's right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. What do you know? There's a, there's a knowledge barrier. There's a barrier to entry. And also we're going to be like, okay, let's go do some stuff. We got people to feed. We got things to do. Right? Like, it's like, mm-hmm. okay, so it, there's, there's this barrier to entry and like that, that is useful, um, for us in multitudes of ways, um, because anarchism isn't in theory, it's in action. Mm-hmm. It's, it's in the fact that you're doing something. So like you have to enact it. If an anarchist has to be educating, they have to be engaging in direct action. They have to be, that's just part of the gig. You can't, mm-hmm. you can't be an anarchist in theory. 
That's just not how it works. Um, so gotcha. yeah, it it's on the ground. Anarchism looks a lot different than what ivory towered professorial anarchism looks like. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes outside of a select few who are very well educated on the topic, um, what we find is propagandized misinformation and a misunderstanding of our modes of operation, our methods of analysis, and our means of engagement. Mm -hmm. And so it's not, you know, it's like your professor made a sweeping statement, an unnuanced statement, right? Like that Gaddafi's, this is an anarchist. It's like, if you understand anarchism, then you understand that there is a distinction to be made. There is nuance there to be engaged in and that sort of thing. And that's often what we find. We find either we are the violent psychopaths that are there to reduce society to a rubble, or Mm -hmm. we find the, like uh, on the good end of things, we find that it's like, oh, they do stuff and stuff, but we don't really understand the stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, We are the most, we are the most organized group in the room. Mm-hmm. that's that's the deal and it, it, it anarchists comes from the greek anarchos it means without rulers it doesn't mean without mm-hmm. rules we're highly okay. organized yeah it's just we're organized differently and that undermines the power structure of those that enforce their will upon us that's a threat mm-hmm. that's a threat they don't like that. So it's like a it's like a wild card. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. That's a thing society does not like, especially when that society is ruled. And we are ruled. Oh, we've got democratic <laughs> democratically elected. Fuck you. Senate and electoral college plus regulatory capture from the oligarchical and corporate class. Suck my dick. Yeah. We're, we're ruled. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Well, th- thank you so much. You're welcome. I, uh, I really do. I really do appreciate it. And um, if you, I, I will be, uh, I will be subbing and tuning in more. If you want further reading, um, outside of Peter Marshall, <laughs> which mm. I get it, that's that's an encyclopedia. Um, I can highly recommend Ruth Kinna. This book can be found anywhere. Um, archive.org. Anarchist Arc, uh, Anarchist Library, the government of uh, the government of uh, no one by Ruth Kenna K I N N A. I have that book. It's uh, it was in my uh, school library. I rented it. Read it. Sounds good. Um, she will lay out a lot of the precepts, a lot of the concepts, a lot of the people, the historical events, the movements, and various elements of various ideologies that are good groundwork for you. Okay. Um, and she'll do it in a way that isn't just horrible to read. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, stay, uh, stay in community, ask questions. Uh, the Discord server has plenty of uh, sources. We've got plenty of academically minded uh, autistic fucks in our community that <laughs> absolutely like have resources upon resources. We've got a bunch of people with a bunch of degrees. So if you've got any questions, it wordy literally say hi. Wordy's one of them. Um, so if you've got any further questions, by all mean, join voice calls when they when they're happening or just throw them in the comments and we'll answer. Gotcha. All right, man. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Yeah, nice to meet you too.